ladies and gents, I hope everybody's doing all right today. It's absolutely lovely here in Yorkshire. The sun's shining, it's lovely and warm, and it just feels like spring's on its way. I can't help but put you in a good mood. Right, I'm just coming on because, 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 and here's a little clue, all these lovely, lovely doilies. Now, I've come on really um, because I have in my shop um, been selling over the last two three weeks doily book kits okay and they have absolutely flown out um i think it's a lot to do with um how i present them to be honest um i don't just put things in a bag when i sell things i do my best to make it really really pretty for the recipient and um so therefore they've been super popular and also um i've done them at an awesome price <laughs> But I've had some of the ladies who perhaps haven't done a doily book before message me, uh, you know, and asking me what do I do, what kind of glue do I use and things like that. So I thought I'd do a quick um, guide to making a doily book. I'm not going to sit here and make you one, <laughs> but I'm just going to give some hints and tips. First of all, your doilies. Um, you source these. I source all of mine from charity shops, okay? Um now my kits have been really good value i've done the cupcake doily kits which are uh, a smaller book which um turn out to be this kind of size you can make doily doily books with the much larger doilies as well but i i think these can be really daunting for some ladies if you don't have a huge stash of things to to build onto them and and what have you they can be they can be daunting so that's why i did the smaller kits but ladies, buy these from sellers in kits. That's where you'll get your value for money. There's other ladies that do them. I know there's ladies in America that do kits. Or source them from charity shops. These larger doilies, you shouldn't be paying any more than... Well, I got two of these for 80 pence. You shouldn't be paying any more than that. You know, you can get some sellers on eBay and whatnot. And they're charging two and three pound a piece for them. Um, or two and three pound for three or four doilies. That is absolute absolutely like, ridiculous do not pay that money <laughs> go and traipse round your charity shops and have fun two for 40 uh, did i get two for eight uh, two for eight so 40 pence a piece so 80p for two extremely large doilies okay that's my first tip get them in as many different colors shapes sizes as you can all different all have got possibilities um i've got uh these ones which are finer i've got the more modern ones which are cotton these are nice for dyeing but the more colors and varieties you've got in your in your stash and just pick them up pick them up if you see people selling them in kits pick them up if you see them in your charity shops pick them up you can wash them all in the um, washing machine you don't have to treat them specially the cotton and um, they just wash um, I've got absolutely loads. Even even um, like your square types, you can cut those in into the shapes that you want. Absolutely beautiful. Like I say, charity shops. Go and source them. Don't be paying a fortune for your doilies. Um, and like I say, you don't need great big ones to make a project. Okay? So let me just move all these out of the way first. Now, what I do tend to do is I will get two doilies. And I do layer them as the base for your book. Now, you can put more and more doilies on top of each other, layer them and sandwich them. I don't tend to do that. I construct my doily books with just using a few doilies and I don't layer and layer and layer with doilies because although you can pick them up cheap, they are becoming rarer and rarer. Which is why some sellers charge a fortune for them because they know this fact and they, they you know they're taking advantage a little bit. Um, but they are becoming rare and they are becoming hard to get hold of. So I use them sparingly and I just layer them and then I build my pages using other items. And what I do, like I've put in my kits, I've just little bits, little bits. This is one applique, this is a little bit of cut off of lace, I've got a little bit of vintage jewellery, I've got some crystals. These are just cut offs from lace and you just use your imagination and build a page like that. Okay, here's another one. Vintage image, print them for free off Pinterest. If anybody is struggling, go to my about page, go on my Pinterest, find my um, board that says vintage images and print some. 
you can use just I mean these are fabric ones that I've had gifted and I've lightly padded them underneath but you can just as well use um if you just put cardstock through your printer and print them onto cardstock and cut it out that will work just as good okay and then again this is just an off cut of lace that I've gathered like a like a flower but left it wide glued it on and put some trims around this is an off cut and this is just a little gem that I found kicking about you don't need to and again piece of vintage jewellery a bit of wedding applique all of these items were in my kits um little bit another little bit of lace and that's another page completed okay these are the little cupcake ones and you just you just build your pages and build your pages until you've got a fair few layers of pages this one's not finished yet here's another layer and you end up with a lovely big yummy sandwich of yummy doily like doily pages and then what you do is you just make sure you bear in mind when you're building these pages that you leave the edges free and you literally link these edges together and you use either ribbon or you can use a ring um, like a ring binder ring and you just link them together very loosely link them together either by threading ribbon through it like I say or using a ring and then you'd have all the bits dangling down and all pretty and all fluffy and nice um, now the most frequent question that I'm being asked is when you're doing using doilies of whatever kind I've got loads um, what glue do I use well I use this one I'm in the UK and I can get this really cheap it's called uh, tacky glue it's I keep telling people it's Anita's and it's it's Aileen's sorry and it's not Aileen's Aileen's is an American product this is Anita's and you can get this in the range this is a small bottle for 99 pence okay now all tacky glue is fabric tacky glue is a form of PVA okay but get the fabric the one that is for fabric because if you just use normal PVA on fabric it might not work brilliantly there'll be a, a, a certain concentration of it for fabric and this dries clear and it dries flexible the only problem with these and it doesn't matter how much you pay for your fabric glue if it's got a nozzle like that let me show you they bung up okay they do they bung up you can put needles in them you can do what you want but they bung up so all i do is i unscrew the lid and I use a fine paintbrush and I get a little paintbrush and if I'm wanting to glue some delicate lace like a small delicate one say like if I just show you this one here if I wanted to put that on I'd lightly use fabric glue for the delicate ones because if you used hot glue on a delicate lace you're going to see it no matter how careful you are you're going to see it and you don't want to see blobs of glue so I would delicately paint the fabric glue onto the back of this and then just press it down onto your project onto your your page however you want it you just paint it on press it on and within a few minutes and I, I literally press it like that with my hand on it okay and within a few minutes that is ready to carry on working it will still be wet so you could peel it off and move it but it will be um firm enough to carry on with your project and it won't fall off and you just carry on working now you can also use a glue gun and I have got this rapid point um, it's it's got its ups and downs this glue gun it's good because it's got a super fine tip I want to point it at feet for tips there because I can't say super fine tip and so it doesn't so you can use it for precision and um, you know it doesn't expel loads of glue because it's got the small um, glue sticks the only problem with mine is and it might just be a problem with mine is that sometimes I'm pressing the trigger and nothing comes out so you've got to have quite a bit of patience but you can get these on eBay just type in rapid point glue gum and they're about £10 with including shipping and the other glue gun I've got is this one which is a larger one and this is a parkside glue gun it has got a larger nozzle but it holds the very very large glue sticks so it's more economical on your glue and i use this for um you know when i don't need fine detail it's still quite good it's still quite a precision nozzle so you can get in um but i would use tacky glue or the precision glue gun on delicate fabrics okay right what are the questions have been asked mostly about the gluing and so you just you yeah you just use that i mean you can do 
you can sew if you like to sew you can tack it on with a few stitches you can do whatever you want there's no just use your imagination there are lots and lots and lots of videos out there just type into your youtube search bar doily book or cupcake doily book i'll put a, i'll see if i can find a few links below to help a few ladies um, there's some beautiful crafters out there that have done them. We've got Jeanette Bagler, there's Michelle Piplin, she's done, she does loads of beautiful ones. Um, there's quite a few, so I, I'll leave some, some links and then you can have a look at what they do and get some inspiration. Um, but really, it is really, really straightforward and if you start yourself off with the smaller doilies and do what's called a cupcake doily book, then it's not as daunting because you've got not not got as much space to fill. And then when you feel like you're a bit more confident, then you can go on to the larger doilies and you can, again, just layer them. Um, if you want to be a bit more economical with your doilies, another thing that you can do and something that I put in my kits is you can use felt. Now, I do sauce... Um, this felt and this is what's been going in my kits and it's um, better quality felt than you get in your normal craft shops because the felt that you've got in your normal craft shops has an awful lot of uh, um, what is it it's well it's it's basically uh, artificial fibers um, and it can sometimes if you get a really cheap felt it can even melt underneath your glue gun so it's worth buying one that's got a wool content to it um, some of the other crafter ones, let me just show you for example, like these ones, they don't have the wool content in them. They're alright as bases, but if you want it to be a nicer quality, then you, you get this one. And this has got a, a good percentage of wool content in it. I think this one is a 30 or 40% wool content. And you just literally, you would just cut a circle of that. And you might sandwich it between your doilies, just to give it a bit more sturdiness, fullness, whatever. I have even seen ladies use cardstock, thick card in between our cereal packets to give it more sturdy, more of a rigid feel. But I prefer it to be a bit more floppy and fluid with it being fabric. Um, what else tips can I give you? Basically, yeah, I just use, I mean, I have got my... Um, fabric images like this you can buy them off etsy shops off ebay and things like that but you know they can work out expensive i was lucky enough to be gifted these um from somebody that can can do it there are also videos on how to get images onto fabric just use your youtube search search bar but the best the best thing is to just have a big stash of printed out images that you get for free and you just cut out what you want and stick them on. If you use it on decent cardstock, it won't be a problem. And then you can also, you can use your flowers. You can put flowers on your doily books. You can use your bits of bling and your bits of jewellery. Um, and, you know, you, even just like when you've got scraps on your desk, like these little scraps here. I've got a bit of, bit of a bow here. And I've got these that I've cut off some lace and some scraps here. You would you'd utilize them, cut them off and stick them on, make little little decorations with them. So this is mine so far. I'll just give you a quick look so you can have a look. Wedding appliques, cut offs. I've made a lovely flower there. On that side again, I've used cut offs and put little gems in. Um, I've shown you that one. Again, wedding appliques. Um, I have um, dyed these bits with distress inks and just use little bits and bobs of crystals on those to decorate so it's just using your imagination and you want about maybe at least three maybe four pages to make a decent size one okay ladies right I hope that helps some of my ladies that have been um, asking me questions any further questions don't hesitate to ask me thanks for watching take care and bye for now